another hot day in Gosh. East Tennessee. Take a look at the thermometer on our Channel 10 weather porch. It says it all. And the Ooh. sun is beating down on Market Square, downtown Knoxville, the whole city, the whole East Tennessee area, as a matter of fact. Without a doubt, <laughs> we're going to check in with Cassie. We were just talking, Cassie. We have not seen a stretch like this mm -hmm. since the 1960s. Mm. Yeah, having four days in a row with highs in the 90s is extremely uncommon in the month of May. And so we actually haven't done that since 1962. That is when we had the longest stretch of 90 degree days in a row in the month of May with nine. Can you imagine nine days in a row in May in the 90s? Well, they did that in 1962, and we will not be doing that again this year. There's a live look from our Alcoa Highway camera. 90 degrees feels like 91. Dew point of 63. Humidity at 40%. It is muggy out there as well. That's why it feels warmer than it actually is. So we are in the mid to upper 80s in a lot of locations. Low 90s elsewhere with dew points. In those 60s, it makes it feel more like the lower 90s in most locations. And with that daytime heating, we have had just a couple spotty showers happening, including one earlier near the Morristown and Jefferson City areas. And right now, a pair of little showers making their way to the east. So Rocky Top, you're about to see a little bit of that rain. And the shower that's currently just east of Norma is going to be making its way across I-75 and probably clipping uh, maybe southern parts of the La Follette area. Eventually, you may get a little shower here and there up there in Union County, too. So again, if you have any of those outdoor activities, you need to keep an eye in and ear to the sky for the rest of this evening and head indoors until those little showers pass on by because it's very easy to get a little thunder, little little rumble of thunder in there, too, sometimes. So for tomorrow morning, we'll start off quiet, very, very mild. And then tomorrow yet again, we're going to extend that stretch of 90 degree days, likely going to be our fifth day in a row, our sixth during this month of May on our Tuesday and that stretch actually will continue into Wednesday and maybe even into Thursday. Now the other half of that story besides the heat is how dry the weather has been. This is our ninth day in a row with completely dry conditions at the McGee Tyson Airport, and that is a record amongst itself or by itself. We will talk about that coming up in the next half hour of the show, but I'll have more on your full forecast coming up in about 10 minutes. Cassie, thanks so much. In Campbell County, three people were killed and a minor was seriously hurt in an ATV crash that sent them over a 100 foot embankment. It happened yesterday afternoon in the Windrock area of Stony Fork. The sheriff's office says they found 47 year old Ronnie Aikens, 19 year old Dylan Aikens and 19 year old Jonathan Laws dead at the scene. The minor was airlifted to UT Medical Center here in Knoxville. A sheriff's office spokesperson says the group was from North Carolina and they were guests at Windrock Park. Rescue crews had to travel about six miles from the trailhead through thick brush to get to that scene. I think this was probably the worst one, but uh, we've recovered several in this area. Five agencies responded to that hours long rescue. Today, crews were figuring out how to get the ATV out of the woods. Here, how they plan to do just that coming up on 10 News at 6. After more than a week on the run, a convicted murderer wanted for kidnapping in Cumberland County is now in custody. Authorities captured George Edward Harden. That was around noon today in Clay County. The Cumberland County Sheriff's Office says that on May 19th, Harden kidnapped a woman at gunpoint in Cumberland County. The two were seen at a Crossville gas station, and then the story moves on from there. The woman later got away when they stopped in Clay County. Harden was out on parole after a 1987 murder conviction for killing a fellow inmate in prison. In Roan County, state troopers today identified two people killed in a crash near Harriman. It happened Sunday afternoon on Orchard Valley Road. 18 year old Austin French and 16 year old Joshua Friels died in that crash. Another 16 year old and the 18 year old driver were both injured. All four were wearing seatbelts and troopers say criminal charges are pending. Authorities are working to identify a body found in the Nolichucky River in Green County. A boater spotted the body in the water Sunday evening about a mile upriver from a boat ramp on Old Asheville Highway. Crews took that body to a forensic center in Johnson City for an autopsy. We want to take a break from the headlines to look at traffic across East Tennessee. Folks wrapping up their Memorial Day weekend. Our first look at I-40 at I-275 and yes, pretty, uh, pretty bear when it comes to, to, to cars on the on the roadways that says a lot people are either home or they're going to be waiting a little later to get home so uh, smooth sailing right there let's take a look at i-40 at cedar bluff much the same there as well you can always find live traffic updates and conditions in the wbir app
All gave some, some gave all. On Memorial Day, we honor troops killed in service to this country. And 10 News reporter Katie Inman takes us to ceremonies across East Tennessee that paid tribute to the fallen. These men and women are the reason. The reason we have our freedom. The reason the flag is flying. And the reason so many people come to remember their sacrifice. Well, without this garden of stone here, we we wouldn't have our freedom. And the ceremonies across Tennessee honored those below the stone. It's a day that we pause to remember that freedom has a cost. More than 6,000 names were read aloud and remembered in World's Fair Park. Willard G. Palm, Myra Phillips. So their legacy never dies. To make sure we don't forget what it costs to be re to stay free. That somebody has to give the ultimate sacrifice so everybody within this country can live free. In Loudoun. These were people woven into the fabric of communities across our nation. Those who haven't come home were honored with a spot left at the table. So we joined together to pay tribute to them. And the flag that once flew proudly over the burned courthouse was folded for the final time. Merciful God, help us to remember that freedom is not free. And if the brave men and women who paid that cost were standing where their headstones lie. I'd give my heart saying thank you and work it, welcome home. Katie Inman, 10 News. And the home of the brave. More than one million American troops have died in combat since the birth of our nation. Ceremonies today also honor the families of the fallen, our Gold Star families. Well, today is the last day of President Trump's visit to Japan after some disagreements between the president and his Japanese hosts. NBC's Kristen Welker is traveling with the president in Tokyo. President Trump preparing to wrap up his fourth and final day here in Tokyo. It has been a trip in which President Trump may have undercut his charm offensive with tweets and taunts in a remarkable press conference overnight. President Trump broke with Prime Minister Abe, broke with his own national security advisor on North Korea. Both the Prime Minister here and John Bolton have said that North Korea violated UN security resolutions with its recent missile tests. When President Trump was asked about that, he said those tests didn't bother him. I am uh, very happy with the way it's going, and uh, intelligent people agree with me. You're not me. bothered at all by the small missiles? No, I'm not. I am personally not. That type of language could complicate his efforts to work with regional partners, including the prime minister here, to try to press North Korea to abandon its nuclear ambitions. It could also make it more difficult for President Trump to strike a broader trade deal with Japan. Of course, that is what the two leaders want. The president has long criticized Japan for trade surpluses. President Trump also sided with Kim Jong-un in criticizing a domestic rival, Joe Biden. Well, Kim Jong-un made a statement that Joe Biden is a low IQ individual. He probably is, based on his record. Uh, I think I agree with him on that. President Trump will talk to U.S. troops stationed in Japan before heading back to the U.S. A Sevierville family just received a piece of the past 15 years later. Jamie Espinosa was a mechanic who worked on a dune buggy on a Discovery Channel show called Monster Garage back in 2004. He lost his life only days after that episode aired. 10 News reporter Sean Franklin shows us how his mother is now using his story to honor his life and save others. Marquita Tench is the mother of Jamie Espinosa. She says her son put his heart into everything he did. He would drive his friends to parties if he thought they were going to drink so that he could drive them home so they wasn't drinking and driving involved. Tent says the perfectly healthy high school senior was running a few miles for his weight training class in January of 2004. He finished but collapsed on the track. Staff thought he was having a seizure, but he died of cardiac arrest. So it's a big part of your heart that's gone. Gone was the mechanic and big fan of the Discovery Channel's Monster Garage who grew up near the shop in Long Beach, California, and pushed to get a job there. Jamie Espinoza. Only days before his death, he made his show debut working on a dune buggy. For years, it sat in the show owner's garage until Tinch's curiosity about what happened to the buggy got the best of her. 
As a mom, I always wondered what happened to it. She found it and brought it to her home in Sevierville. Tinch says this is the last thing that Jamie worked on, and now she wants to take the heart that he put into this and share it with as many people as she can. Tinch plans to start a nonprofit to help families avoid losing someone to cardiac arrest. The more you educate, the less it's going to happen, hopefully, and that's my goal. And it, it would be an amazing thing for his legacy and his memory. The least I could do is try to save some others. That's what he'd want me to do. Jamie welds up the floor pan. So I'll, I'll get in there and talk to him sometime when I'm by myself, I'm sure. <laughs> in Sevierville, Sean Franklin, 10 News. His family has donated multiple AEDs to schools, including one at Jamie's Middle School. And we have a link to Jamie's episode of Monster Gra Garage on our website right now at WBIR.com. Adventure Action Park in West Knoxville opens this week. That attraction includes a trampoline park, Ninja Warrior course, Formula One electric go-karts, and an arcade. The park is open to all ages from kids to adults. It opens Wednesday morning at 9 and an open every day after that.